Right, this is going to be a short lecture on Aztec OO, which is a uh, sparse linear system solver. It's part of the Trilinos package, and of course we're going to discuss it uh, like, like we have all of the packages uh, from Trilinos in this course in the context of Pi Trilinos or the Pi Trilinos wrappers. So Aztec, first of all, is a library of algorithms for iterative solution of large sparse systems, okay? So a Aztec was developed in the 90s, um, and it's a, a code written in C, and it actually won an R&D 100 award, I think, in the late 90s, about 1998 or so. But it sort of had generic interfaces or C interfaces, and uh, provided a list of solvers, so like uh, conjugate gradient, generalized conjugate gradient, uh, GMRES, and there's some other ones there. And preconditioners, uh, Jacobi, gauss seidel So if you don't know what those are, it's really outside the scope of this class. We're sort of going to use Aztec uh, OO like a, a black box, much like we'd use a linear system solver in MATLAB or uh, Mathematica or some code like that, except you know this, of course, is meant to be massively paralleled. And it's particularly well suited for sparse systems, so like column row sparse or a variable block row sparse, uh, like we've talked about um, previously in the course. So a Aztec OO is then uh, the object-oriented interface to Aztec. So initially, I guess, it was just sort of a wrapper around the original C Aztec code uh, to provide a, a more object-oriented interface and an, and an interface to the Apetra data structures that are part of Trilinos. Uh, but I think all future development uh, or new features that have been added to Aztec over time uh, have been now done under the pretense of Aztec OO. So Aztec itself is not further developed. Uh, now all the new development it goes into Aztec OO. And uh, again, it provides an interface to Petra. Um, one of the nicest ways to do that is to instantiate an Petra linear system which takes the arguments uh, of an Apetra matrix, uh, a vector of unknowns, and a Petra vector of unknowns, uh, and a right-hand side vector, V. Uh, of course, this would be to solve the matrix equation, AX equal to B, in the context of massively parallel. So the basic use for Aztec OO is to construct a coefficient matrix A as either a CRS matrix or VBR matrix construct a, both a right-hand side vector B and a solution vector X as a Petra vectors, of course distributed, and construct a, a Petra linear problem, like I've shown here, instantiate the Aztec OO solver, pass in any parameters that you want to use as a Tethos parameter list, and then solve. So I'll give you an example of kind of this part of the uh, basic use features here. Everything else should be known already. And as far as the parameters, you know, this is any particular settings. If you want to choose a particular solver or a particular preconditioner um, and, you know, the number of iterations, the tolerances that you want to iterate for and these such things can all be set uh, as uh, Tethos parameter lists. But a lot of times it's good enough to just try the default settings, which I think uh, the default solver uh, is actually a GMRES, um, and a lot of times it, it's good enough to just try those solvers uh, and see if they work, and then, uh, you know, by uh, issuing further commands through the parameter list, you may be able to precondition the matrix better or something such that you get the solution a little bit faster. So here's an example, and um, uh, through uh, this point right here, all, all of this part, is actually just um, our CRS matrix example from uh, a few lectures back. So we're just going to construct a, a CRS matrix. Uh, in, this, in this case, um, the, the number of, of rows is, is going to be um, sorry. The number of rows is going to be nine. So the, the physical problem uh, that we're solving here is actually just uh, Laplace's equation. So um, 
So it's just uh, Laplace's equation. Um, in fact, I guess uh, there's a minus sign out there, and I can tell that by looking at the stencil. So we're going to solve it with a finite difference solver, and so uh, the finite difference uh, solver is going to have uh, you know a stencil like this. like that. So this would be our coefficient matrix A. Um, this is going to be 1D, so you can think of this problem as possibly like a one-dimensional bar with, say, nine nodes. Uh, nine comes from the size here. Uh, nine discrete nodes, evenly spaced, so not quite like I've drawn it there. Uh, so we're going to construct a matrix like we have in the past then. Uh, construct a, a solution vector x, which is just going to be all zeros. Our initial guess is just going to be all zeros in this case. And then a right-hand side vector v. Uh, so the right-hand side is where we're going to apply the boundary conditions, Dirichlet boundary conditions in this case. And, and you can think of uh, you know, this uh, as the first entry, basically. We're just, you, you might think of this as just applying a, uh, a displacement or something of minus 1 and then applying a displacement of a positive one on the, on this end. So if you think of this like a 1D bar, uh, and then we pull on it in either direction, it might be a physical problem for for this uh, in this context. So up until that point, uh, nothing's really changed from uh, before, except we apply some boundary conditions, um, and then sort of here's where we set, where the magic happens, so to speak. So we just instantiate the petrolinear problem. We feed that in as an argument to the instantiation of the Azteco solver, and then we solve with this iterate. So the first argument uh, to this uh, use of iterate is the uh, maximum number of iterations, and the second argument is the tolerance. And so if we do that, and then we print out the answer. So we're going to go over the command line. Keep in mind that the initial guess uh, was initialized here, and a Petra vectors are um, automatically, if, if no other arguments are given, they're initialized to zero. Uh, so uh, the initial guess is all zeros, and we're going to print out x, and you should, after we uh, run Aztec OO, and you should see uh, the solution. So if we go over to the command line, and we'll start by just running our uh, code. I kind of call it 1D Laplace here. We'll run it in, in serial. And um, there you see that what's printed out here at the bottom uh, is the solution. So the very first entry is minus 1, like we specified, and the last entry is 1, like we specified. And then what you get in between is actually just a, the solution of this problem is just a linear linear line. So just a linear uh, values between minus 1 and 1. Okay. So we could also, because this is a parallel code, we can run this on uh, multiple processors. Okay, so there, now you see that the, the problem has been partitioned uh, across the processor as e evenly as possible. So we had nine nodes, so we get four on one processor and three on the other, but you can see that the range of the solution is from minus one to one again. And of course we could run this on three processors as well. And. Uh, there we go. So keep it in mind that it, we're not, we can't control how it prints to the screen, so they're out of order here. But uh, there's the kind of rank zero processor solution that ranges from minus one uh, and then increases, and then um, here's the, the one in the center. So the decomposition here was three nodes, three nodes, four nodes, uh, and then kind of the final processor, uh, you know, the, the rightmost part of the bar has this solution. So if we were to gather all those, then we could plot them. Uh, if we want. So, and of course, Azteco provides some information about the solve, you know, what, what the residual looks like uh, as it's iterating, and some information about the preconditioning otherwise. So, we can also change what's printed out through some parameter lists, but here we're just providing the, uh, the kind of default. If you notice, there's no, I, I didn't set, use a set parameter command, or there's no there's no commands uh, issued to change the default settings from Aztec OO. So this is a very simple example, a very short introduction to Aztec OO. Um, again, there's many solvers that are available that and really to discuss what the individual solvers are 
is beyond the context of this class and what would be studied in like a numerical methods class. Um, so, you know, I'm trusting that you have some insight into the type of different solvers you would use for different problems, or otherwise, you, you know, like I said earlier, you should just use the default and, and go from there.